Okay, so um, best setup for 3.6, that's definitely debatable on everyone's expertise. Um, I only try to give you a guidance on, uh, in a way of how you make the system as, uh, yeah, in a way as to, so that it withstands the test of time in the best possible way. Okay. Um, what types of 3.6 deployments we know? We have the free SMB version, which is very limited in a way. Um, we can only go up to 20 uses there. We know that um, also limited in terms of zip trunks and all these kind of things. Then we have the dedicated ones, which are either hosted by 3.6, um, self-hosted or on-premise. Um, Either of them I can either use with an NFR um, license, which is your uh, direct or your personal license or your partner license. Um, if you are a partner from 3CX and sell 3CX, then you get an NFR license. I think it's actually even two where you can test the system with one of them, so play garage stuff, and the other one you can actually use for your own use. And then we have the pro and enterprise license on there as well. Now, again, the license options, as I said, the free SMB is a basic limited system hosted by 36 with up to 20 extensions, which is available through the partner portal. And of course, you can also create that if you're not a 3CX partner just on their website, um, it gives you then like an end user account. But uh, from the terms of uh, support, yeah, you mostly um, you stand on your own feet in that regard. Then we have an NFR license um, as a 3CX partner. Um, they are available for your own use. Of course, you have to make sure there that you um, actively sell 3CX as a partner, um, else you will lose your partner status. So you cannot just say um, that you are a 3CX partner. Um, you sell once a year one big license and uh, then you live from that 3CX is actually asking their partners to actively sell the system to new customers. And then we have hosted by 3CX where we have pro and enterprise, enterprise license available hosting and maintenance is offered by 3CX directly. These systems are at the moment limited to up to 750 extensions. Um, and then we have self-hosted pro and enterprise hosting and maintenance is offered by you or more or less if the customer has, for example, a Microsoft uh, infrastructure, then they most likely will use their um, Azure platform. But the deployment and maintenance is still done by the um, installer and this is available through then the partner portal as well or we have the on-premise solutions which is still um, existing there are still companies who prefer it that way where we also can have the pro and enterprise um, and there the hardware and maintenance is offered by the installer this is available through the partner portal as well, on top of that, we can have um, trial licenses in case you have to do a proof of concept with for a customer or you have to uh, test something on your end for a customer with a, with a, with a setup that um, you don't want to use any of your NFR licenses for, then you can have a trial license. I think that's three months and you can also apply for that in the partner portal. Now, these deployments can be freely moved. Um, of course, it depends on the license. We will 
generally only talk about the dedicated setups. We will not talk about the limited uh, to 20 extensions max versions here. Um, we can move them freely from self-hosted to on-prem or from on-prem to self-hosted or to hosted by 3CX, or we can also swap them between um, the operating systems all with the same um, backup file. So there is, in that regard, there is no limitation when we once start going with the system. As well as the system can be freely scaled, um, of course, comes down as well to the license there. Um, if we are on 36 hosted, we can only have max or it's only supported by 3CX up to 750 extensions. Um, on on premise or on uh, self hosted, of course, based on the hardware you use, uh, you can go higher than there. We can start with a system that has, for example, 10 or 20 extensions, and we can then grow with that system up to roughly whatever. I know one system here in Australia that has, that has roughly two and a half thousand extensions on it, um, and it's funny, it's it's following me since the early days or the mid days of um, of Alloy back in the day, and I just had the other day a discussion about that system again, where I was contacted by a different company, and after. Uh, two minutes into the conversation with the customer, I said, is it that system there? And he said, yes, where do you know with that from? Um, yeah, so you, you can really, you can, you can grow big. However, that requires that you um, choose the required um, platform for it to run and the required hardware, else you are just going to redeploy that system too often. Um, and of course, in that regard, it also requires that you set up the system from the beginning properly. And that's more or less what we are going to look at today. On top of that, you can have those systems globally distributed. There's no um, yeah, limit in a way to that. Uh, it's it's you can you can once you start uh, using 3CX you can have them more or less uh, located around the globe. You can have uh, 3CX systems standing. We know that from the advanced training um, when we come to the bridges topic. In the introduction section of the basic training, I have. That slide included, which clearly says plan ahead. Um, that's one of the main um, uh, 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 wishes that I have to everyone who starts to dis deploy 3CX or is deploying 3CX, um, plan the system so that it withstands the test of time as good as possible. There is no 100% guarantee in that way, as we know, but we can try to um, erase limitations that are obvious. Also add redundancy and spare capacity. Um, spare capacity and withstanding the test of time also means create capacity for a lot extensions. Um, this doesn't mean that your customer has to tell you that. I know from personal experience that the customer sometimes um, says, oh yeah, we will never get there, we will never get there. And even if you say to him, look, it would make sense to go down there or to, to do that. No, no, we will never. And then two years later, um, we come to the situation that there is additional work to be done. And the customer says, oh, why didn't you never tell me that? Um, yeah, so it is tricky. I know that I was there before, um, but it's always good if you, even if you then would have to change the hardware underneath, already start in a way to plan that the rest is set up for um, a 
big system that can grow. Um, to achieve a system or prepare and plan the system the right way, um, it's best to create a numbering plan at the beginning. Um, numbering plan used to be something that is quite a mandatory part in telecommunication. A um, lot of people, meanwhile, coming from the IT world, they might not know um, about the benefit of a numbering plan. And this is where we want to spend a little bit of time on today. Um, looking at the former slides, we can see that the system virtually can, can grow to huge numbers. By that, we must brainstorm upfront to see what the system could cause or what could face in the future, prepare a numbering plan, and ensure the system lasts as long as possible without change of hardware, reconfiguring, reconfiguring the whole system due to lack of free extensions. Numbering plan, yes or no? Um, I took for that slide, I took the example 3CX had once in SBC versus Stun. People from old times, they might remember that slide. Um, newer people, yeah, it's just pro con. Um, the pros of a numbering plan are we have a clear structure, we have internal number ranges, um, we can assign them to departments or to the people inside departments as whole ranges. It is very flexible. It is easier to maintain in the future and easier to support. The cons are you have to do some kind of preparation work, some kind of planning and some time uh, to build it up. However, if you set up your systems mostly the same way, you can more or less go with the numbering plan, with the numbering plan through all your systems, more or less. In a way, you can always use that as an example. No numbering plan, numbers are added on the fly, it's fastly done. The con, it's chaotic, it's time intensive, uh, intensive to, to maintain, leads easier to mistakes, is less flexible, and of course, we might have to change the system or the, uh, reconfigure the system from scratch um, much sooner. Um, numbering plan Y, um, there are two uh, icons or pictures in here, which people most likely will know from past trainings. Um, first of all, in the basic, when we install a system, we are asked on the extension length. Um, we will see that further down now, the more extensions we use, the bigger we can grow. In the advanced, we have, as I said before already, we had the, um, the chapter, the topic bridges. If we use a numbering plan, we are fine, mostly, mainly. If we don't use one, we have to work around. Still, it's doable, but it's just adding some additional um, parts to, to the chaos we then anyway have on the phone system. Prerequisites for a numbering plan, we have to look at the company size, especially what to what the company could grow. And again, we don't have to just look at what the customer tells us. Nobody can predict the future. If somebody could predict the future, um, he probably wouldn't have a company because he then probably would know the lottery numbers from next week or from even this week, and he wouldn't have to go to work anymore or whatever. Yeah. And um, we would know have to know the company structure, the departments in the companies, and all um these kind of um uh, parts that the company has. Um, we would also, of course, rely on company plans for future 
uh, development, including branches, departments, services that are added, expansion, these kind of things. What services they want to use on the system, and of course, also our bridges an option in the future. We then merge that all together into a result that will take tell us then do we use three, four, or five digit extension length. Um, people who follow my training sessions over the past, yeah, seven, eight years, they know that I am a big follower of uh, the golden middle way. Um, one moment. That I, that I prefer to go here with um, four digits, three digits. There used to be a time where 36 was creating every new extension with this value. And this value would have been or is very dangerous here in Australia. Um, especially if it's on a PBX and someone has to dial that value because you will not get there where you want to get in an emergency. Yeah, And I can tell you, I have seen plenty of systems where they had extensions that had that value in there. Okay, so therefore for me, three digits since that day were a no-go. Five digits. Yeah, okay, there we can discuss if we really want to have such a big system. Therefore, I always generally opt for the golden middle, um, which is four digits. Um, if the customer says, I want three digits, yeah, okay, fine. Generally, I would say he doesn't have to dial that often a four digit extension or a three digit extension. So therefore adding that extra digit when he, for example, dials um, 120 or 1200 or what else ever, that doesn't hurt because mostly um, you will see that then afterwards as well, they will work inside their department and there they have BLF keys where they just press the button. Yeah, so generally it's, it's all debatable, of course. Yeah, but definitely a no-go for me is a two-digit system. That's just too much limitation. That's just a no-go. Yeah, you roughly have, um, you, you, yeah, you have probably like 80 extensions or even less um, that you can create on that system. And then imagine you have to add um, dummies and these kind of things. Yeah, so I always go for four digits, which is a fair amount. Now we see that here, number plan the structuring with three digits extensions, I can create thousand extensions minus, depending on how much queues and the IVRs and all that stuff I have, but roughly minus 50 extensions. Um, and then with 40 digit extensions, I can create 10,000 extensions. And then again, minus a certain amount of system extensions. And with five extensions, uh, five digits, I can go up to 100,000. And then again, minus there, we most likely will have more. Additionally, what I would like to say, um, for me, these extensions, are not extensions that are really should be user extensions. They can be used for dummies and, 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 and whatever kind of stuff that is okay, but they are generally for me, that's for me. They are not um, really extensions in that regard. So from that perspective, we lose on each of these um, sys on, on these um, builds, we would lose additional number of extensions. Here we would lose 100, here we would lose 1000, and here we would lose 10,000 um, of those. Yeah, It's just a number on a PBX, an extension number starts with a one. That's just um, or a two or a three 
or a four. However, um, once we have defined on which extension length we go, we start with um, collecting of the data. We have to collect all the extensions at the corresponding departments they have, the maximum number of extensions to be expected per PBX, what is about IVRs, queues, paging, and ring groups? If so, how many? How many they are looking at as of now? How many could be projected? Um, as an example, we have here three sites. Each site has 150 extensions, which means overall 450 extensions. We have 10 IVRs on each side, which means we have 30 IVRs um, all over. We have seven queues on each side. I just took those numbers that are out of a random uh, thing. We have queues each side, so that can that makes an additional um, 21 queues. We have uh, four ring groups each side, which makes 12 ring groups. We can, uh, of course, say they have nothing again that's all hypothetical we have two paging groups um on each side which means six paging groups Oops. and then if you calculate that we end up with 519 um extensions that are already occupied yeah and then there we have um uh, system extensions like the, the reserved faxing, voicemail, and all that kind of stuff. So we come even higher than that. And we have to have the capability to extend. Customer clearly tells you we want to grow. Yeah. So with that, and if I go with three digits extensions, I'm sorry, uh, if I go with three digit, huh? Oops can't write anymore we already have when we look at that we already have let's say just like only 400 because we have to include here as said the um all the system extensions that are not part of ivr queues and all these kind of things 450 free extensions which is not too much if the customer wants to uh, 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 grow. So here, three digits is definitely not enough. So we would have to go with four at least to open up the system for future um, possibilities. Yeah. Now, then we have to put it on paper. We have to think about what would be a feasible structure for a system on how it could grow in the future. Also, of course, including bridges. Yeah. And if we know from the um, advanced training back uh, in the bridges section, we know if we give the bridges their separate number range, we don't have to add, strip, prepend, whatever. We just say calls to numbers starting with three, an extension length or number length to with four, go over to bridge one. Calls starting with a number four and the length of four go over to bridge one. The same goes with five calls, starting with five. Yeah, we have much less risk of an overlap. And then also there, we can create more local virtual extensions across the systems, yeah? You see, we can go here with 100 IVRs, with 200 queues, Ring groups, anyway, you don't need that much, and paging groups also not that much. While when we go with three digits only, we at some point we reach a limitation because we do not want sim 
simplicity wise, we do not want to actually use uh, pretending and stripping of number. We want to clip it as clean as possible because in the case of maintenance, we don't want to have to look to look at too many um, uh, uh, points that could cause us an issue. Yeah. Okay. Then, of course, and I took here for the smaller one, I took then the 100 numbers here. We start then on 1 PBX. You see, from that number range, that 100 to 299, we start then breaking it down. How many reception extensions we require. And this includes already the spare ones. Yeah because we want to keep them in blocks. Yeah. I come later to that as well, then why? Yeah. So we have here 10 receptions. At the moment, they need only four, but they will, we have prepared 10 extensions, 10 reception extensions. Yeah. Then we have accounts, sales, and so on. Okay. And of course, when we would use four digit extensions, we would have much more space for that as well. But again, we probably would have there then also a bigger accounts team, a bigger sales team, whatever. Yeah. If we look on what usually happens on a PBX, when people don't really set it up in a structured way, we see that. And then you see, Reception one, sales one, sales two, accounts one, reception two, accounts two. It gets mixed throughout. Yeah. We have whatever. Whatever just comes gets thrown at the bottom of the list. Yeah. If we structure it, we know that case, for example, we can, in a way, we can set up every system like that. Yeah. And we can because it gives us uh, a clear structure. And if as as long as the customer doesn't come with I want this and this and that, um, we can then um, go with with um, with this way. And you know, f in the future over time, um, when someone calls you and says, "Oh, I have an issue with um, call number," it's always a number calling it's this extension or what else ever you know already troubleshooting point also like for example q or what else ever oh that's that's a that's a normal extension or it's q or or what else ever and you know already in a way what the possible cause for the issue could be because you had that already once then you either um, can say to the customer, ah, oh, yeah, can you try this and this one? And if it works, and if if you solve his his problem, he's a superhero because you just gave him over the phone, you gave him an answer that 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 fixes that issue, which you more or less knew based on your numbering plan, the numbering setup that you have. If you have it like this one here, always in a mixture of you you do not really know what 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 the, of course that there could be the not the name that comes uh, shown up but if it's too short or if 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 just the number is shown or whatever it's not so simple than there if you have it structured it's way simpler of course customer generally might tell you ah oh, no i don't want that and yeah we never grow that big and all these kind of things generally would you would try to show him what the benefit of that is further down the track um again if he doesn't want if he says i want all numbers in one number okay so all number uh after each other fine yeah that's how it is then um and if there then comes once a big reconstructuring or restructuring of everything yeah then it's him who has to then uh, yeah, more or less pay for the hours. Yeah. The same I advise to do with trunks. 
on the 36 by default the first trunk added starts with 10,000 second trunk starts with 10,001 and so on of course bridges are also um, considered trunks so from that perspective if we would add a bridge and you remember from the advanced training adding bridges you can define the number yourself generally it is offered to go then just like with the next one um, i would advise with the bridges go also down that path because then you know when you have a lock somewhere and you have to see something that causes an issue and you know it's an 11,000 number, you know it's a bridge connection. If it's a 10,000 number, it's a trunk. Yeah. And of course, that gives you the capability uh, oops, to have a thousand bridges or even more, and here a thousand trunks. And I would say probably nobody has that amount. Yeah. Now, Departments play a big role in that game. Um, departments used to play a role already on the older three CXs. It's just they have not um, been shown that much yet. So with three CX, we have the opportunity to add extensions, to add user extensions into user groups departments. Um, in nearly every business environment, the users are grouped into teams, departments, where they do the tasks and jobs. Yeah. So I'm in pre-sales. Um, so there are other people here in pre-sales. Then we have sales. There's sales uh, department. Then we have support. We have um, vendor-specific departments. So where they say, are oh, they are only for, let's say, 36 or for yearlink or for um ubiquity or what else ever yeah so we have departments so why we don't replicate them as teams on the system yeah so um that's what you can do with 36 as well you can group the extensions into departments now on 36 um before version 20 we were adding them into groups and the groups were having um more or less like the opportunity for the presence and we were able to have them uh, uh, uh controlling via the group on a outbound way now with version 20 um this has been enhanced with the ability to have also branches locations and department specific groups yeah so we can have people in a department so let's say in sales but they then also are in a um a together in a branch let's look at us at leader we have five branches and in all of these branches we have account managers, we have salespeople, we have RA people, these kind of things. So we can either add them all into the RA department so that they are inside the RA department um, as an entity. But then we can add them again into another department based on their location. And then when it comes to their location, we can add location-based office hours to that department and holidays, yeah? We see that here with version 18, we had, for example, the trunk, which was the source on the inbound way. We had the trunk, call came in, and then it went to an extension, IVR, Q or ring group. I talk about version 18. I don't talk about version 18 update 7 or update 8 where we were able to forward it to group because we were going towards version 20 there already. Version 18, we had the destination and then we used the groups for presence and rights. That was it. On an outbound way, we could 
group the users based on the rights where they are allowed to go. You can have users by just as users, as a source, allowing to go out to a certain number dialed, or we could put them together in groups and then say that group is allowed to dial out there. With version 20 on an inbound way, we have still the opportunity to call in directly to extensions, to IVRs or the queues and the ring groups. However, if we have to add there special requirements like office hours, holidays, we have to go via the department. Yeah. The department or location then defines the office hour, the time, and the call then would be routed to either an extension or an IVR or a queue or ring group, paging group, whatever. Outbound wise, there didn't change too much. We still can use either the extensions or the department for the source of outbound rules. I generally prefer the department because it gives a clearer overview. Um, you have one entry and then inside the department, you actually add the extensions. Now, As we can see here, we have now created departments like that, and the extensions are replicated inside there. Yeah? Now, what we also can do is on the outbound path, we can then define who can dial out. We sit down, the customer tells us who is allowed to make international calls, who is allowed to make national calls, who is allowed to only do local calls. And these extensions will then be added into that department. This then allows us to give easier control on Outbound rules. We look at that then in a couple of slides. The departments make a lot of sense in areas where we must manage multiple extensions for allowance, time condition, presence. You see here we have outbound rules. We go a little bit deeper into that then as well. We have international here, we have local SA, we have bridge USA, national, that kind of stuff. We have call handling. I don't have too many dates on that system, so therefore I only can um, have one there. Um, from that perspective, um, we generally would be able to have inbound calls here, I did here, I did here, I did here, and I did here. And of course, we can have multiple um, inbound departments then there regarding inbound Western Australia sales, inbound Western Australia um, account managers or support or accounts, whatever. Or we have one number for Western Australia and then we route them to an IVR and then we have it chosen. Now here, office hours on our inbound, especially on our inbound, we define the time zone. So for example, here, inbound Western Australia, we would say the time zone is Perth then we would add the opening hours, the work, the office hours, and that would then count for the department 
inbound Western Australia. Um, we can do then, of course, the same for Northern Territory and so on. Of course, we are absolutely free on what um, department, how we name the department, how we structure them. It's just we have to think about what makes most sense for the way we have to set up. Yeah. Also here you see I went in a um, alphabetical way. Yeah. Um, I went inbound and then outbound, and of course you st still could say then okay, I want to have um, the international together with USA or what else ever, that kind of stuff. Of course that would have that should have been here bridge USA. That's a typo or a, a miswriting from me and then it would actually be up here yeah but you see also there you can make it nice and clean and structured so that when you look at it you see you don't waste too much time especially on bigger installs um we can have inbound routing did or um cid based to branches state departments We can have that. Then we have internal accounts. That is just for internal calls between the departments, between, for example, also bridges. And we can have outbound control instead of single extensions. We would use departments. Yeah. And then we also could have the presence for the teams. Now, the outbound rules, for example, and the inbound rules, we could say we don't show presence to anyone because they are just for core control, while the internal departments here, internal accounts, internal reception, internal sales, internal um, support, whatever, they have to be seen within their team and within um, the branch then you can literally control the um, presence that way, yeah? Or you can also give it free on the whole system. Now, again, as we said it before, office hours in the departments can be used for different time zones, different office hours per department, different office hours per department in different time zones, and different holidays yeah so we can have for example the inbound calls come to australia perth then we set here the office hours of the business generally how the calls come in and then we would define that then then um also in the internal accounts where the call goes to when the internal accounts western australia open half an hour later than the office hour, the global office hours of Perth, we would route them then in a different way. Okay. Now, inbound rules, again, we can, we are now there a step further. We then would say, for example, we have the inbound Victoria, New South Wales, um, when the office is open route calls to. And here, of course, I can also use a department. And then if that department has a different office hours, it follows that department's call flow. So we would come in with the trunk to the first department, which is the global office hours. And then inside there, we would be routed in a different way, depending on what that department's hours are. And then inside that department, I would, for example, send it to the queue or wherever. Yeah. outbound rules using departments for outbound rules control uh, eases the handling and managing of users allowed to limit destinations 
of course, as always, the order of the rule is important. But again, then there, we can literally say um, everyone inside the Department International, see here, can go out international. Everyone inside the Department National outbound can follow that one. So we can control easier who is actually going out. Of course, we have to add those extensions into the department, but that looks much easier when we go into the department and we see a list of all the extensions in our overview than when we actually have to look here. It's um, 50, um, 52 to 50, and then it's cut off. Yeah, and then we would have to go into the rule. We would have to go in the rule, then go left. And because we don't see that much numbers that might be inside there. Yeah, so it's much easier if we have it inside the department. Now, what we also can do is with the three CX, when we have such um, setups, we can structure everything using a csv file so what we would do is we would create um let's say two extensions maybe three and then for example one of these extensions is i would define this one here now as um, a disabled extension and then i would just create these three extensions on the system and then I would export that file. Once that file is exported, I will look at that file and I would see where then between the first two and the third, the differences in terms of extension disabled. And I would know that value that I have for the disabled extension, I have to add for all other uh, uh, extensions that need to be disabled. So I could create here on the fly, more or less, like just with, 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 with dragging down 2,000 extensions, more or less, in an easy way. Yeah. Of course, I would have to have a, a sheet from the customer with name, um, first name, last name, then the email address, if we have um, a mobile number, that kind of stuff, we would have to add that all there. Um, but generally, it is much faster because also the language I can drag down, um, the model I can drag down, the ringtone, Q ringtone, ringtone for internal calls, the language, that stuff I all can drag down. Voicemail pin, um, yeah. There are different ways on how that can be done. I then can also say um, recording is allowed, these kind of things. So um, I can add all those extensions more or less pretty fast, much faster than if I would have to add them one by one. And then, of course, the ones that we don't create yet, or that uh, not that we, the ones that we don't create yet. Um, the ones that are not having a activity yet because they are just spare, I would disable. Yeah. Then at the very end, I would remove the first three extensions that are already on the system. I would remove them from the file, save the file and upload the file. And I would have 2000 extensions in I will not say in a blink of an eye, but much faster than if you would have to do them manually. Yeah. Now, as a part of that whole installation with using bridges, which different systems where we have different numbering plans on other locations, we might have to adjust the configuration file. As you know, with the version 20, um, when we deploy a system that is on-prem, 
not hosted so not hosted by 36 or also not hosted by a supported hosting provider like google cloud um aws lightsail asia if it's something where you have to manually install the system like on prem or on a a a, a host where you have to spin up a vm and then manually um, set up the system there you get a config file that config file generally should be okay however it starts with the extension number of 1xx or x or xx yeah so now if you have to spin up a system where you want to have the extension numbers starting with anything else than one so let's say two or three or four five or if you want to change the um zip port on the system or the https port rtp port range the tunnel port then you would have to edit that config file before you upload it of course with the extension you can say okay i create that and then i create the second extension with starting with this one then as i assign the um, system owner to, to 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 that extension and then i delete that yeah that can be done but you can already do that in there because you literally just have to change this digit here yeah from one to two yeah and then it's done i show you um what you have to look into that yeah so now once you have that config file it's an xml file open it with notepad plus plus notepad plus plus um i doubt that i have to say much more about it is a uh, free notepad text file editor which is out there since ages and you can even do websites with it when you know how to code and all that stuff it's 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 a pretty nice um tool and of course it's always impressive on um what some people give you for free same like with wireshark and all these kind of things yeah so now you would open that config file in notepad plus plus and then you would go and say okay i would want to change the extension number from thousand to two thousand because there's only one extension inside there and that's generally the system owner could be you as the installer you could put yourself inside there you also could say i don't want myself to be the extension thousand i would want to be myself to be for example the extension 8999 or in that case now we would then go with the zero extension i would want it to be the zero 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 yeah because i am not really active on that system i am just the installer um and yeah so you would enter that value that you want to change inside here and then you would go multiple times with f3 to search for the next value yeah so for example with the extensions you have i think there are four values inside where you can find so you would have to make sure that you don't have the extension number number somewhere still having the old value if you want to change that so you would have to be sure that you go through it search for it yeah and then like we have it here search for it and when you would search for this one here you would find that multiple times or if you would want to change the http port or the https port it's mainly these ports yeah or these values and then um you would you would have to go through until you found the last value 
And of course, always when we talk about the extensions, always ensure that it's actually also the extension. Most likely it is. I haven't seen a config file that has, when I entered a thousand, that came up with something else than the extension. But there are roughly four, four values, four or five values inside the whole file, which you would have to change. Once you are done, you go and press Control S and you're done. I would not advise to try this one here. However, it is inside there. Some people might come to the idea, oh, we could change that. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Okay. Now, once that is changed, you can upload the file then to start configuring your system. You remember when you install 3CX on prem or on a uh, unsupported, manually configurable hosting provider, you have to either upload a backup file or you have to upload a config file. The way that you have to enter or that you can enter the license key only and go along with that, that is not existing anymore. Now, why has it been so difficult? Can't we just deploy the system as is in a basic way? Definitely, you can. However, you always must think about the capability that the system has as such to grow nearly endlessly. Of course, endlessly is overstipulated, but you can grow really big out of small installs with that system even if you would use multiple different um, systems bridge them together you still would have to the opportunity to get big and if you have a customer exceeding on what you initially set up you cause restrictions to him costs to him time into your own work and most important onto your customer yeah so from that perspective having a proper plan when you set up a system and think of how to deploy that system in a way that it really can grow to yeah with the customer and all you would have to do is from time to time maybe change the hardware it sits on and change the licensing going from 16 simultaneous calls to 32, to 128, to 512. That's it. Maybe go once from a pro to a enterprise license. That's it. The system itself as a entity, when you have it built up from a start, it will follow you on these steps. Because you have to think about the system, a phone system over time gets more complex. It's not that simple anymore on a year further down the track or two years further down the track from when you started to um, deploy it because you add call routes, you add additional extensions and all these kind of things. It always only gets more. And when you come to the point that you have to skip it all and reinstall that system from scratch that's then when it's when 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 it's really getting time intensive and setting up that system so that when you have to reinstall it from more or less scratch of course you can work with the excel sheet that you have by right, exporting the extensions but for example call queues um, departments, that kind of stuff, you can't export and you can't live with the backup because when you have to go for more numbers, so more extension digits, you have to start by zero. Yeah. So from that perspective, you will yeah, face quite some work when you have to reinstall a system from scratch that actually has to replicate what the customer has. So from that perspective, you better start up with a plan and build up on that one then.
it will last much longer.